Welcome to SolarTechDIY.com. This is Pat speaking to you. I'm going to show you this bare conductive electric paint. This is a product which will help you repair solar cells that have been otherwise damaged beyond repair. Not the cell structure itself, but either the bus bars or the bus tabs. What I'm going to demonstrate here is two mini solar cells that have been cut uh, cut improperly I might add uh, to the point where half of the solar cell has been rendered inert because it has no bus bar and the reverse side the positive side of the cell also has no uh, bus bar or bus tabs so what we're going to do with our unique product here, we're going to paint on a bus bar. So normally these two little solar cells would be, uh, I'm not really sure what you do with them except this. And so just to illustrate the principle of how these solar cells are manufactured, what when you look at this solar cell as we're gazing upon them now, you're looking at really two separate processes. The polycrystalline wafers are cut from a, a solid ingot, which is a crystal that's uh, synthetically grown uh, out of uh, silicone, and it's an entire process I can't elaborate on in, in this short time, but after the wafer has been cut from the ingot, it is further processed and the processing includes etching in the um, wires that you see running uh, perpendicular to the tabbing wire I'm inserting, as well as the bus bars, which run perpendicular to um, the smaller wires. Now those are in the solar cell to help conduct the electrons. Now since the bus bars are added after the fact, sort of an aftermarket, that's not really true, not in the true sense of aftermarket, but you get the point. It's separate from the wafer. So this conductive paint is an extension, essentially, of the process used to install the bus bars initially in the factory. So uh, normally you would just use this conductive paint to repair a bus bar or a bus tab but to illustrate how well this works, I'm actually cr creating a miniature pair out of these two. Now, in theory, that shouldn't even be possible because we have a solar cell that has a negative face with only one bus bar. So it could theoretically carry the current, but you're not going to be able to necessarily generate a circuit uh, it depends how you connect it down the line, but uh, for all intents and purposes, these you wouldn't use these solar cell pieces for anything productive. Now, let me retract that. You could use them for something productive. These could be used to make a small, small solar panel. For our purposes, we wouldn't use something like this in a 100 watt or 200 watt solar panel. It just it would you'd have to have too many of them. And having said that, these are still going to generate half a volt, even though they're comparatively small. Uh, if you look at the business card up to the upper right of the this particular uh, solar cell I'm soldering on to get a size comparison, that, that's a very small cell. They're only a couple inches square. But remarkably, it still generates half a volt. The difference is the amperage will be very small. So uh, to get wattage, remember we multiply the volts that the solar cells generate times the amperage, which we get when we're testing them. So uh, we would just have a smaller wattage solar cell because they're not very large. They don't have a very large sun collecting surface. But just the fact that we can repair a cell that's been otherwise rendered uh, useless is quite remarkable. 
and this also brings up another potential use in that you can create a solar panel without using electricity. It is possible to completely construct a solar panel using this conductive paint. And in fact, we'll feature a video on that later on. But the, to illustrate how effective this is as a repair substance, I'm taking the extra step of creating a pair, which I'll show you the test. This is a functioning pair of solar cells. We could put this in a panel, which illustrates how effective this conductive paint is. So you can purchase the conductive paint from us. But remarkable capabilities. Because this is a good addition to your toolkit to have, as you will experience when soldering on the positive or back side of solar cells, sometimes if you have a, a failed attempt to make a connection on an individual bus tab on the back of the solar cell, uh, you know, sometimes they can be finicky. Uh, by comparison, the negative sun facing side, uh, those tabbing wire strips are very easy. Uh, I rarely have difficulty, I don't think perhaps I've ever had a problem with the top side sun facing bus bar. It's always the negative side, I'm sorry, the positive or the back side of the solar cell. Something about those small bus tabs, I don't know if they just make me nervous because I know I've had problems with them. Uh, and in the past, uh, I've had to surgically replace a solar cell or two because I've damaged a bus tab. You know, if, if the first attempt to solder fails uh, and then you attempt to apply more of um, the rosin, rosin flux pen and then re-solder, chances are that bus tab will, will be destroyed and you'll have a solar cell that you can't make a connection on one or more of the bus tabs, which makes the panel or that particular solar cell uh, an ineligible candidate. You wouldn't, you know, it's your weakest link in the chain. And actually, I'm glad I said that. The weakest link in a solar panel and even in a smaller scale in a solar string, if you have a problem, some sort of mechanical problem with one of the cells, the performance of that particular string will only be as good as the damaged or weak cell. So if you have a, a bus tab or a bus bar that's having difficulty adhering to the tabbing wire and you go ahead and put it in your string, you're, you're going to have one link and it might only be just one strip of tabbing wire. But if you're missing one strip of tabbing wire and really the pan, the, each cell only has four, you're talking about 25% of your capacity gone. And it's not just 25% of the capacity of this cell, it's now 25% of the capacity of your entire solar panel. So keep that in mind, you know, it's, if, if you pass over a problem, that problem is going to haunt your entire project. So it, it's something that makes having this conductive paint a valuable tool. Because if you know you got a problem and you address it, it's less likely to sneak up and bite you. So, as you noticed, I didn't need to solder where I used the glue, but I am soldering where I had a viable um, bus bar to work with. But I, I didn't need to solder where the, the um, conductive paint was. I did, and I have soldered over this, and it doesn't affect in a negative way uh, the adherence. In fact, it may strengthen it. But uh, the next video uh, I invite you to check out is when we test this on our custom platform. And I'll show you that this electric paint really does work. It conducts electricity. And it's a good uh, addition to your toolkit. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, I look forward to 
having you watch other videos. Thanks for joining us and keep up your forward mo momentum on your project. Good job.